Welcome listeners to today's episode of the Black Business Roundtable. I am your host, Doug Blackshear, broadcasting to you live from the city of diversity, Oakland, California. Quick update today on our previous podcast dated 10-14-2021. Remember Artif. Now, for those of you who've forgotten Artif, my first name is Art, and my dad is Artist. And he told me I have to earn the other IS for me to be an artist. So Art is Blackshear in memory of uh, my father in this uh, transition and home growing. Also, driving while Black. The, our guest today, our guest that the day was Oakland brother Michael Thrash. Police Department and Driving While Black. Audience, let's be clear. That story had a huge impact when I left here and for days and weeks after that. Driving While Black. Michael Thrash, Mr. Michael Thrash, along with his attorney, Mr. Matthew Hawkins. And if you recall, Mr. Thrash had a clean record since birth and was headed innocently with his hard-earned legally, legally withdrawn bank acquired funds to invest in his future trucking venture. Per our audience request, we wanted to advise Michael Thrash's next court appearance is April 4th, 2022. If we could ask, please support this case via your social media and hashtag Driving while black, black, Michael Thrash, Taylor County, TX, Texas. Once again, hashtag driving while black, space, Michael Thrash, Taylor County, space, TX for Texas. And tag the city of Abilene and Taylor County, Texas. Their local NAACP and surrounding churches, National Black News Podcast host, and Don Lemon, CNN. Morning talk shows, celebrities that care about our, mis- our issue, and of course, their city officials. And if we don't start calling this out, we don't network together and point out these bad actors, it's going to get worse. So please, get in contact with Abilene, uh, city of Abilene in Taylor County, Texas, regarding driving while black, space, Michael Thrash, Taylor County, space, Texas, city of Abilene in Taylor County, Texas. Show celebrities that care about our issue and of course their city officials. And I once again want to elaborate on that. Celebrities and city officials, especially if you're black, that could have been you. That could have been you. Attached our podcast link from 1014 listed to listed today's podcast description online and see the link below on our screen, which is youtube.be slash eight YK3NZ95SO4. And I'm sure, oh, there it is right there on the screen. All right. I don't have to say that again. Audience, um, you might have to give me a little pass today on in regards to, um, I had a significant loss. And um, uh, it's been a terrible, terrible week for me in regards to, um, I have one sibling, and and um, she uh, she went home on Monday. So, um, if you could, please pray out to my family, and especially my mother, Jean Blackshear. Mom, we love you, and we're here for you. Moving on, <clears throat> special thanks to our sponsor. This Jeff Carter Lewis of Souls 
slice restaurant and catering in Oakland, California. The website lists winter break, but please note they are open every Friday. Okay, cuz I'm waiting mm -hmm. on you. You head out, that's it. I'll catch a, a morning shot and we'll be a so slice Friday <laughs> evening drinking beer and, and, and pizza. <laughs> Every Friday in February from 6 to 10 p.m. for, and get this audience, biscuits and be and $5 beer. And let me tell you something. The brother got some great uh, 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 non-traditional beer. And it is good. Make sure you Uber or Lyft, too. All right? We want to make sure we practice safe uh, consumption of uh, uh, spirits. Mm -hmm. So once again, that is open every Friday in February from 6 to 10 p.m. for biscuits and $5 beer and gospel brunch, 12 to 3 p.m. February 13th. So RSVP right away. Also, spots are filling up quick for their spring season catering services, Easter, Mother's Day, and graduation events. Located at 5849 San Pablo Avenue, in Oakland, California. 94608 website is Soul Slice and <laughs> the Soul Slice.com. Once again, that's website is Soul Slice.com. S O U L S L I C E.com. Phone number 510 879 76 Eight, nine. Tell them that the Black Business Roundtable, my sister here with that beautiful hat on, Dr. Ashley and mm -hmm. Doug Blatcher sent you. And I assure you, Chef Carter will welcome you in, whether you knew me or not, though. Anyway, Magnolia Engineering and Construction and their continued support. And we congratulate Tammy Willis on being a minority and woman-owned engineering and construction firm, visit magnoliaengineeringandconstruction.com and learn more about Tammy Willis at magnoliaengineeringandconstruction.com. The sister is amazing. Good Lord, I am surrounded by all these beautiful queens, it just makes me elevate my game here, Dr. Ashley. So you guys keep, you ladies keep doing what you're doing. Today's show highlight, tonight we will discuss the Oakland City Council District 4 run with the latest update from our local candidate. We will also discuss update regarding the African American Sports and Entertainment Group and the new youth of Oakland Coliseum. Now, I've got to say something because I'm doing pretty good on time here, but I've got to say something. Mayor Libby Shaw, you went to Washington, D.C. to get hundreds of millions of dollars for a billionaire to build a Disneyland baseball park at the Port of Oakland. The black community want to know if you will do the same for the sports uh, african-american sports and entertainment group you only have 11 more months in as mayor wouldn't you want your legacy to be that you help usher in and promote the first black african-american nfl and wnda owned team that would be a great legacy, especially in the city of Oakland, the city of diversity. You graduated from Skyline High School a year after me. So I, I know how old you are, and I'm not going to tell that. But Mayor Libby Shaw, I'm going to be asking you that every week because it's critical that we have our executive of the city promoting the first NFL-owned team here by African-American group. Thank you, Mayor Libby Shaft. All right, moving forward, our special guests today include weekly check-in with 
our very, and I, I, I'm trying to not say my, <laughs> with our very own Dr. Ashley Coleman, Doctor of Psychology, Department Chair, Assistant Professor of Psychology at University of the West. Welcome, Dr. Ashley. Thank you, Doug. Next, Janani Ramachandra Esquire. She continues to be our social justice warrior fighting for Oakland one day at a time. Let's congratulate Janani Ramachandran and her new campaign run for Oakland City Council District 4. And she was born and raised in the East Bay. Catch up with Johnny Ramachandran anytime at Central Legal De La Raza website, centrallegal.com dot org or her new website at Janani for Oakland and Janani F O R Oakland Janani for Oakland and new Instagram at Janani the number four Oakland. Now sidebar on that I was up till 1 30 in the morning last night while they were completing the redistricting process. Um I'm sad to tell the people who live in the city of Oakland, the Coliseum has been voted out of District 7 into District 6. And that's going to seriously impact the economics in the deep East Oakland. Councilman Lauren Taylor, I hope you do the right thing and help foster and push along the economic engine that the Coliseum brings to this city. And I hope to have you on the show soon to discuss that in detail. Second, Janani Ramachandran, based on what they're redistricting, redistricting, I think they may have taken her address out of District 4, but she's going to bring us up to date when she comes on today. And this is a further sign of gentrification in its finest and at its best in the city of Oakland. And we humbly ask that our audience continue to spread the word. When they talk about redistricting, don't be at a concert. Don't be at the game. Be there to identify how you're going to be represented in the district that they put you in or that you help assist to be put in. And that is so critical. And Janati is going to give us a clean understanding of what happens when you close your eyes and don't and, and and stop watching. Thank you. Next, giving us an update, returning guest, my man, Mr. Ray Bobbitt, president of the African American Sports and Entertainment Group. We look forward to having that brother on. He always lights it up. Whether he's in his on his uh, phone or in his car on his phone, he lights it up, audience. Decorated veteran of Desert Storm as a U.S. Marine. Hey, wait a minute. Larry Lewis was a Marine. We got we 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 got we got Marines working with us, uh, Doctor Ashley. Ray is the founder of the African American Sports and Entertainment Group, AASEG. Learn more, visit, uh, excuse me, to learn more, visit aasegoakland.com. Once again, that's aasegoakland.com. Now, for the national poli political highlight and several elections around the country, Marcus Flowers is a brother. And once again, people of European descent, brother is not my brother, but he's a black man. Proud Army veteran, husband, father, and patriot. He is a Georgia Democrat running for Congress to unseat the big election lie supporter, Marjorie Taylor Greene. To our audience in Atlanta, Georgia, I humbly ask that you get behind it, brother. Change would be great to donate, but if you can drop some paper in the bucket, please do. Money is the megaphone to the message. 
in politics, unfortunately. Money is the megaphone to the message in politics. So if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, or anywhere across this country, send what you can to Georgia's Democrat running for Congress, Marcus Flowers. Learn more. Instagram at Marcus, the number four, Georgia, or Marcus four, and that's F O R, Georgia.com. He is running, uh, excuse me, he is coming on our show on February, uh, I think it's the 24th. I didn't put the date in, but he's coming in, in uh, February 23rd, 24th, and I'll get that clarified before the show is over. Our next candidate running and it won't be our candidate he will be the incumbent senator reverend Raphael warnock a democrat helped flip georgia blue along with senator also running uh, is running again in the u.s senate he is a pastor an advocate and i love the advocate because without advocate we wouldn't have change we gotta have advocate to push for change for all people advocate uh savannah born and raised and morehouse college alumni with donnie glover is a morehouse graduate also so that is a wonderful uh hbcu school mm-hmm. reverend Raphael warnock you can learn more on instagram at Raphael warnock or Warnock for F O R Georgia.com and my sister Stacy Abrams, a Democrat, is running to unseat Republican Brian Kemp for governor of Georgia. And to quote Stacy Abrams, opportunity in our state shouldn't be determined by zip code, background, or access to power. Learn more on Instagram at Stacy Abram or StacyAbram.com. And once again, I talk about this every time. Stacy Abram put a documentary in about 2017, 2018. Please go online and pull up Suppress Documentary by Stacy Abram and learn how Atlanta, Georgia has taken away voting places in the black and brown community while when you go to the white community you can be in and out and park your car in five minutes the documentary definitely pointed that out and i was truly stunned at the difference between the voting places in the white areas and the voting places in the black and brown area it is a eye-opening uh, uh, documentary, please. Suppressed by Stacey Abram. Val Demings, a Democrat is running for the 2022 Florida Senate seat. If you would like to stay updated on Team Demings, text the word JOIN at 77076. The former Orlando police chief is seeking to unseat. I love to this audience. I look forward just on the show to do this one part. Republican Little Marco Rubio uh, from Florida. Uh, little Marco, pack your little bag, put your little uh, kids' tennis shoes on, uh, uh, kids' mark tennis shoes on. And as Trump has told you when he was in office for four years, scurry on up out of there <laughs> marco ruby what a god he's a character val Deming for the 2022 senate her tagline is never tire and she's gonna have to have that tagline to clean up that mess that marco rubio made down there in florida election date november 8 2022 visit val, val Deming or excuse me val Deming.com or Instagram at Val Demings. Once again, ValDemings.com or Instagram at Val Demings. And now for the 
I got to do the drum roll for you, Dr. Ashley. Now for the news of the day, da -da 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 -da. Dr. Ashley, please take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And good evening to our listeners. On this day, January 27th, we are going to Birmingham, Alabama. Again, on this day, January 27, 1967, uh, Jefferson County Sheriff deputies went to the home of Mr. Robert Lacey, a black father of six, to enforce a law requiring him to take the family dog to the veterinarian. The police engaged in a confrontation with Mr. Lacey, which resulted in him being shot to death. Um, the incident, kind of the precipitating event, was the dog had allegedly bit a neighborhood child, um, and the health department had instructed the family to take the dog in for a rabies test. However, the family did not own a car and had no means of transportation um, for themselves or the animal. And so then when the deputies knocked at the door, Mr. Lacey answered, um, and they ordered him to get dressed and to come with them. When Mr. Lacey inquired about why he was being asked to go with the officers and why they just couldn't take his dog, um, they refused. Uh, Mr. Lacey subsequently complied with the order to get dressed. Um, a gun he kept in his drawer fell to the floor and the officers quickly pinned him to the wall and began to handcuff him. Um, and again, unfortunately, as we've heard so many times, this was in uh, 1967, but was initially supposed to be a peaceful encounter uh, led to the death of a Black man. So I want to invite all of our listeners again to visit. Um, this news is courtesy of the um, Equal Justice Initiative. Um, and please feel free to go to the website uh, to hear more information. Again, that's www.calendar.eji.org. Dr. Ash, and kind of work with me with me today, Dr. Ash. I have to be honest. Um, got a little bit on my mind, but uh, I had somebody say, "Man, well, can you do the show?" Audience, my job is to inform and enlighten and teach. So, unless I cannot make it, I'm gonna make it so we can make it. Dr. Ashley, please sponsor break. Thank you. Absolutely. And want to thank you. Um, a special shout out to Mr. Donnie Glover of BlackUSA.News. And want to invite our listeners to tune in to Chap and Friends on Mondays, Party Marty Let's Talk on Tuesdays. Um, and a special shout out to our, our first sponsor, Magnolia Engineering and Construction, whose vision is to further the presence of Black women in the construction and engineering industry through key partnerships and building contracts in the municipal, government, and transportation sectors. To join our advertisement family, please send your company name, address, website, phone number to BBRT2021 at hotmail.com. And Doug, I know we have some wonderful guests um, that we're getting ready to bring on, but I just wanted to share just a, a, another plug for therapy in this time. There have been so many um current events in the news of sickness of loss um and again i've said it before we're in season three of the pandemic a lot of us are experiencing um the aftermath of the fatigue of COVID, of losing loved ones of life not looking how we expected it to now is a wonderful time to get the support that you need um again this can be done by visiting website, first going through referrals of your, if you have a primary care physician, um, if it's important for you, gender, race, ethnicity, there are various, you can start with psychology today and filter um, to your desired um, intersections of identity. But more importantly, mental health practitioners such as myself, we're available to support. Please don't suffer in silence. And if you notice that a loved one needs support, it's okay to come alongside them, send a text message. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. Um, I'm here to listen. And just planting seeds and letting it be okay for the people around you not to feel okay and to let them know that you will hold their hand literally and proverbially as you support them in getting better. 
So again, during this time of year, we usually do our checkups. It's a reset. Now, again, is a great time um, to let people know you love them and you're thinking about them. Thank you, Dr. Ashley. And for all those who sent me Facebook messages, et cetera, I love you all too. And they've made a difference. So thank you. Dr. Ashley, you want to bring in our soul slice chef. I'm so excited. My stomach is, is grumbling. Here we go. Listeners, we have another treat for you today. Chef Carter Lewis of Soul Slice Restaurant and Catering in Oakland, California, has joined our advertisement family. Last week, he taught us about all the wonderful things that can be done with Black Eyed Peas. And I still can't believe that he talked about cooking Black Eyed Peas in 12 minutes. And so for those of us who were taught down home and soaking the beans and overnight, he did magic. So we just, again, uh, want to welcome Chef Carter Lewis. He must be behind, he must be in the kitchen. Oh, oh. Here he is. Yeah, he's on his way coming in. I'm gonna put mine on mic because I don't want to miss one one ounce of what he has to say. Well, while we wait for oh, there he is. Yay! Can you hear me now? Yes. Yay! Hello, we're here. Hey, I'm live uh, at the restaurant. I thought today I'd take you in the backyard because it's such a beautiful day outside. Um, I'm sure our connection is gonna work, but you can see our lovely beautiful backyard uh there you have it how are you guys today go ahead Doc. i was gonna say doing well chef but now i'm hungry and i i, I hope i don't become angry as the, the, the <laughs> man i can't wait look at that he's got to lay it out hey so okay so you can see me so how are you guys good this is great. Hey, I like the uh, shout out to mental health. It's very important during these times. I know it's trying for us. Um, here at Soul Sites, we're actually on a winter break. We're not doing regular service because of the pandemic. We're only doing events. And uh, this Friday, uh, not this Friday, next Friday, we start a series, Biscuits and Beer in the Backyard. <laughs> so come on down for some biscuit sandwiches, really amazing biscuits and a lot of local beer five dollars a can um so that's really good of course we have our gospel brunch still going on so um a lot of things happening but yeah mental health very very important and one of the best remedies is food <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you guys heard all the all the hoopla drinking is now deemed bad for you uh i don't know if you saw the news i don't believe it i'm still gonna drink i think anything in moderation is okay so today actually i want to talk about uh, an amazing wine that sparkling wine that we carry here at Soul Slice. Let me get my camera ready here. Um, we carry something we call, uh, well, we don't call it, they call it, it's vodka. Mm. And vodka is actually the, the very first. I think we lost audio, but I'll finish it up. Bodkin. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to have some because I've never heard of it. And I know if it's that so slight, <laughs> I will enjoy it. What about you, Doc? Oh, we got him back already. There he is. Hey, sorry, the signal went out. Oh, that's okay. Go I, I took over for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so there's Bodkin. So let me go fast. I don't know if this thing's going to go out of the way. It keeps getting weaker. Hold on, so. I don't know what's going on. There's is that no a fighter you have back there? Yes, it is. Oh hey, my I can't goodness. apparently I can only stay in one space, but uh I want to show you today. I want to talk about our cornbread. Everyone's mm. familiar with uh yellow mm. corn meal, right? I love all things corn. I love mm. corn in any form. I love corn. So yellow corn meal, but we also use here blue corn meal, which is amazing corn meal. This is actually from North Carolina. Um, but I like the blue corn and we make something called buckwheat cornbread. That is a huge favorite. Um, people are very angry when we ran out of cornbread, but it's really good. And you can see here, it's actually kind of cool. It's kind of blue. I don't know if you can see. 
the mm -hmm. color. The sun's mm -hmm. going down, so the light. But we have, uh, this is our, our cornbread. Mm -hmm. It's really, really delicious. And so this is baked, but you can also do it the old fashioned way. You can do hoe cakes, Johnny cakes, whatever you want to call it. You can see they're blue on the inside too. Very, mm -hmm. very delicious. The key, mm -hmm. uh, I think the popularity of our cornbread is because it's gluten free. It's gluten free cornbread. Oh. That's gluten free. People ask me all the time, can you make it vegan? And I say, we made it gluten free. That's that's a start, right? So <laughs> can't make it <laughs> make it vegan too. I tried. It didn't really work. It's really good, but it's really delicious. I love it. My friends go crazy for it. Um, but you can do this. I don't really share the recipe because it's a very special recipe. But uh, it's all healthy things made with buttermilk and yogurt and honey and blue corn, buckwheat. Uh, yellow cornmeal. It's really, really delicious. So there you have our buckwheat. And not not only do we do that with cornmeal, we also love cornmeal on our cornmeal fried oysters. These are our cornmeal fried oysters. Um, I, I was gonna. I can't really bite one, but these are. You know, they're kind of. You can see the inside. They're they're so delicious. People love our oysters. Um, and so the cornmeal fried oysters. And in addition to that, we have our popular cornmeal fried chicken that everyone goes crazy for. Of course, we serve it with our soul sauce, our hot sauce, which you can get online on our website. Um, but yeah, there we have it. We're talking about uh, corn today, and I just wanted to share um, our goodies with you all. Um, and I hope you can put a little, little cornmeal in your life <laughs> in a very special way. So there you have it. Chef Carter, I think we're going to have to rename your segment Temptation Thursday because this is brutal. I love oysters. Do you um, really? I do. I really do. So this is, I'm telling you, this is brutal. This is must be a test in denying oh. oneself. Oh, I'll be there. I'll tell you. Um, so a little secret. I'm allergic to oysters. Are you? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm allergic to shellfish. I'm allergic to two of our popular, most popular selling foods, uh, oysters and, and shrimp. But I can cook it. Okay. Oh, my but um, yeah, it's really good. I want to eat oysters so bad, but I will die, so I won't. But um, I enjoy watching people eat them, and they're topped with our pickled peppers. These are our pickled Fresno mm -hmm. peppers um, that are really good and spicy. And Doug, I think you've had the pickled peppers, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> You gonna make you go you go you gonna see the screen look like this. They gonna say, "What is that?" And then he's gonna show up. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, and and when you talk about corn, we can't forget grits, right? Grits. Mm -hmm. I love grits so much. Mm -hmm. We have a very special blend of grits. We blend uh, California Gold grits uh, with regular um, grits. Um, and it's really they're really really delicious we make it with oat milk they're very creamy they're vegan um put oat milk because you know back in the day we put butter in our grits and you know to make it vegan i think oat milk makes it creamy and delicious it sort of is a good uh substitute for butter so there you have it grits cornmeal cornbread johnny cake all that good stuff right here at soul slice Come check us out on Tuesdays, starting uh, the first Tuesday in February. We have some biscuits and beer. It's going to be delicious and fun. And back here in the backyard, I'll try. I'll try to get it another out of the backyard. I'm getting better at the camera stuff. Look at that. Hey. hey. Oh goodness, that yeah. looks great. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. If you don't mind, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Get out of here and uh, enjoy this bottle <laughs> of vodkin by the fire and just chill out. And I hope you guys have an amazing week. And, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. We will see you next week. I might see you tonight if I keep <laughs> flashing back in my head. I love what you saw. Thank you, Chef Carter. Thank you, Chef. All right. We'll see, see you, you next soon. week. Bye-bye. Or before okay. then. Okay. <laughs> Right. Janani Ramachandran, Esquire, fearlessly fighting for Oakland.
our social justice warrior, friend of the show, and our very own, our legal expert, Dr. Ashley, please. Yes, running for Oakland City Council District Board, Janani Ramachandran Esquire, graduated from Stanford University where she studied political theory, systems of democratic governance and economic development. Witnessing the injustices her clients faced at the hands of our inequitable legal system, she was driven to make a difference as an attorney and attended Berkeley Law. There, Janani supported tenants, small business owners, and survivors of domestic violence across Oakland. Hi, Janani. Janani. Hi, pleasure to be back. Janani. What's going on, young lady? Let me, let, let, it's my pleasure to get to fire off the first question. Can you share with our audience, for those that may not be aware, what areas of Oakland District 4 applies to and what the demographic demographics of this district and your future constituents? Thank you. I would love to explain that because our borders are not even right. confirmed yet. Um, so every 10 years, Oakland and like most cities and counties and other districts go through redistricting, which is supposed to be a process that uh, uses census data to account for population growth. Nothing too complicated, change the borders based on population, make sure that um, there's some level of racial and economic equity. In the past, redistricting was a tool to shut out the voices of minority communities, to make sure that there was no majority of any minority group to be able to exercise their political power in electing their leaders. Unfortunately, yeah. Yes, Doug, <laughs> I know you have thoughts on that. <laughs> Can you explain, cause see, and I'm black, so black audience don't take this personal. Can you explain to our audience why it is so important to fill out those and, and and i want you to finish the next question but why it's so important to complete those census packages and why um redistricting and gentrification work hand in hand because mm -hmm. a lot of people go well what's that gonna do if i'm in this district or that district so can you for you explain that to our audience because i want to make sure that they're educated on what is going on, not only here in Oakland, but all across this country. Thank you. Uh, uh. You know, th there's so many reasons to fill out those census packets. It doesn't take very long, but having account for the number of people in the district determines funding for so many different programs, for schools, for public services, for ho affordable housing, for small business development. It is so important that people of every background fill out these census data, but especially groups that don't right now. There's, there was a map of Oakland of the estimated population and the return rate on census data. Um, and you know what was the dividing, you can already guess which communities in this city filled out that, those packets and were fully accounted for and who wasn't. And one reason that's so important is because it shapes district lines. So if they, if we have so-called independent, and I say so-called because I do not believe they are actually independent, uh, redistricting commissions going off of bad data and being influenced by special interest groups and power brokers in the city, people with money and power, um, to change the lines to influence their needs, community, our voices are going to be shut off and they are right now. So district four, and there's a lot of controversy involving this redistricting process, but the, the key point to notice here is that Oakland's commission has made decisions that just fly in the face of public interest. Public, the public has spoken hundreds of members from district seven have spoken, for example, talking about their need to be to have the call to retain the Coliseum, an economic engine, this 
something that has been in that district for a long time. Where I live in District 4, I live in the most diverse part of District 4, the most working class, the highest percentage of renters, the most racially and economically diverse. It is actually a majority of both Black and Asian communities in this, in this neighborhood. And we mobilized dozens, dozens of dozens of our neighbors in this district to speak up about what is their community. Don't divide communities, because when you divide communities, you dilute their power. And that's exactly what happened here. The commission made some decisions in the city that decided to completely go against the voices of not just dozens, hundreds, hundreds of community members in Oakland, in different parts of Oakland, who said they wanted certain things. And the commission decided, no, let's, let's succumb to some of these power interests that are guiding these decisions. And, um, I strayed completely away from your question of what the district oh, no. is. No, 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 no. The, the, the audience needs to hear mm -hmm. how impactful, positively or negatively, it is to go uh, to not vote and not complete these census forms. So, and uh, and have a clear understanding because I was up to, I don't know, were you on the meeting last night? I was up to 1.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they broke down the people who were not for it by 12 30 by 1 30 by 1 o'clock and 1 30 they were going like hey yeah let's go with it meeting's over and it's sad so but go ahead i i just was mm -hmm. disheartened mm -hmm. at the redistricting regentrification process that is just working at 100 warp speed here in oakland california but go ahead dr ashley please absolutely uh janani on your website janani for oakland.com you outline uh, six key principles, policy principles, which are responsive leadership, public safety, fire safety, clean streets and flourishing parks, homelessness, and equitable economic recovery. And I was really excited to see what all of that means. But can you share with our audience, like briefly outline um, the key pillar? Yeah, I'll give a super quick overview. But, you know, first and foremost right now is public safety. There is there are extremely high levels of, of violence, of property crimes, and, you know, there's the, it's not historic by any means. Oakland has gone through so many periods of history with high levels of crime, and we're in one of those periods. But we have to do something about it. We need to make sure we're spending the dollars that we do spend on policing and public safety efficiently. We need to make sure that if you're calling to report a violent crime or any kind of crime that police don't take five hours to show up mm -hmm. and that's something that i care deeply about and i could go down that rabbit hole for a long time but really quickly fire safety is a major concern for a lot of oakland you know you have residents who remember um the firestorm of 1991 that killed many uh residents in the oakland hills destroyed hundreds of homes we also have more recent fires, um, the ghost ship fire a couple of years ago that killed several folks who were living um, in, in in essentially a warehouse. And if you think about the reasons why you had a bunch of uh, relatively young people living in warehouses, it's because of the lack of actual affordable housing. And I know people, I have friends who have lived in some of those kinds of warehouses before, and you're forced into these situations that are unsafe for a lot of reasons, including fire safety um that are there and some of the other uh platform points clean streets i think that having beautiful neighborhoods clean safe streets is a tool for violence prevention you know it's an important factor of violence prevention community mental health safe neighborhoods for kids for youth for so many for elders for so many different kinds of people and it's really the bedrock of both safety and mental health um, in a lot of ways. Thank you. Is it your turn or my turn? I, I, I'm trying to take notes because <laughs> I want to be able to articulate when these people who act unintelligent ask me, why do I want to fill out that census? That's for Mexican or oh, that's for illegal. You know, it's crazy some of the things you hear about. Everyone in the, vo in the sound of my voice Fill out the census and vote, vote, vote. Um, 
excuse me one second, uh, John and Nick. Can you answer that question on the screen where it says, what district mm. is Piedmont? Now, audience, for those of you who are not from Oakland, California, Montclair and Piedmont is predominantly white. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Piedmont is separate is a separate city from Oakland. They decided we don't want to deal with the poverty, violence, and black and brown people in Oakland, so we're going to form our own city, and that's what they mm -hmm. did. Um, Montclair is a part of the district, and it also trickles down into Oakmore, Laurel, Diamond, Glenview, uh, and these are very diverse parts of um, of Oakland, and not necessarily, not really the hills, but part Laurel, for example, especially the areas below 580, is you know a lot of folks consider the flats. Some of the other neighborhoods, lower hills or midlands or whatever you call it, but I think there's a there's a real diversity of interests here. You have yeah, you have encampments, you have crime, you have um, fires, you have kind of a range of issues and a little little bit of different sides of, of the city. But um, it's a very interesting district. I would love to tell you what the borders are as soon as we find out in a few weeks. <laughs> uh, before I go on to the next question, so they did not conclude the um, uh, redistrict, redistricting on last night, well, actually this morning at 1.30, I thought they had concluded that they took the Coliseum out of District 7 and put it in District 6, where I'm going to be following that to make sure the Fisher family is not given that Coliseum by our local politician. And you know what I'm talking about. Exactly. So they made some tentative decisions. It's not approved and finalized, but they cut out my neighborhood from District 4. And I I am still absolutely running. I'm not going down without a fight. There are political motivations to kick out to kick me out of my district. And without saying too much, I'll just say the only part of District 4 that they modified and they decided to remove from the district were two blocks around me. Audience, now let me be clear here. I am not popular with the mayor and her crowd. I am not too well liked by a few of the city council members. But when you are fighting for social justice for all and economic empowerment and development for all, you sometimes pick up a few enemies. But if you want to battle, bring it on. Thank you. Next question. Having previously served on as a commissioner at the City of Oakland Public Ethics Commission, does this experience help you in running for your campaign in District 4? Absolutely. It is... It has really shown the fact that we have corruption in this city. We have a lot of corruption in this city. We have city officials using our taxpayer dollars for their private interests. We have lobbyists trying to get city of Oakland government contracts and influencing campaigns by making illegal contributions. There are so many instances that i learned of blatant corruption and kind of the silent forms of corruption as well that account for some of the many reasons our city is not functioning in the way that it could so absolutely it's a very important experience <laughs> can i can i ask a question teacher yeah. <laughs> audience let me be clear this next statement is coming directly from uh, Doug Blackshear, I am so disheartened at the diversity study under the, and once again, this is the disclosure, Doug Blackshear is making his statement based on him reading the total diversity study done by, done by Mason Tillman Company, Dr. Eleanor Ramsey who is a black woman 
and she's done diversity studies from Oakland, California to Baltimore, Maryland, and all across the uh, United States. Mayor Libby Shaft, I see you take a lot of pictures with local organizations, nonprofit, black and brown. When are you going to stop taking pictures and start addressing that 0.32% of $500 million of contracts going to white men? You take really, you're very photogenic, but we need you in your last 11 months to leave a legacy, not of gentrification, but inclusion in the economic engine here in Oakland, California. And last but not least, because we're running good on time, I have to say this. If I'm lying, Mayor Libby Schaff, Honorable Mayor Libby Schaff, come on this show. Or we can come on a show that you want to go on. But we can clear this up. And as I said last show, 0.32% of $500 million, which is a half a billion dollars, is $1.4 million. So that's not even crumbs, audience. You have to lick the pan to even taste what was in the pan. That's how little was left in the pan. Thank you. That's a Doug Blatcher moment. Well, I know, yeah, Janani is uh, getting ready to head out, but we just want to give you um, just another final opportunity, Janani, to share with our audience any information uh, regarding your run for Oakland um, District 4. And before you do that, I do want to just give, pay you a compliment. One of your key principles is responsive leadership and your transparency today on the show regarding the redistricting and the moving, the uh, concerted efforts to remove you from District 4. Thank you for your candor. But any last words? Absolutely. I think I'm, I'm an open person. I which a lot of politicians are not. I say things as they are, and I think we need leaders who do that. I'm not afraid to call out people who retain this power in Oakland that they should not be retaining and need to return that to the people because the people have truly never held the power in the city that they, that they ought to be and that they deserve. And this redistricting process is a small microcosm of so many of the problems in the city. It's just a very small example of, of the way a small minority of people hold the key and money that controls the city. And I am determined to, to be a part of a new wave of leadership that changes and challenges that. So thank you for having me. Audience, I'd like to say before Janani leave, please flood her uh, 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 Instagram mm -hmm. and also flood Mayor Libby Shaft's mailbox, flood the city council's mailbox, mailboxes, and let them know how disheartened we are that a specific effort was taken to take. A, I'd like for you to say what they did, Janani, because I saw that and I was like, wait a minute. I think John Lee living this. So say what you said before you exit, please. Yeah, and I'm not pointing any fingers at who no. or how or, or what, but it's extremely suspicious and it's not democratic to go against the voices of hundreds of people, residents of this district and allies and supporters across the city. You are really flying in the face of what the public wants. And that's unacceptable. And that's just one of the many kinds of things that needs to change. And I know, I know, Doug, you're not standing for it. And <laughs> not, none of none of us are. And we will fight. And I, I'm still running. <laughs> Doctor, let me just say one thing. I'm going to make sure that, um, you know, I had a few family things going on. My mother 
who has been in this city for 59 years. She is heartbroken on how gentrification and the political dynasties that are running this city have taken over this city for, to enrich themselves and impoverish, impoverish their constituents. So thank you again for coming on today. Dr. Ash, if you have any going, and let me tell you something, John and me, this show was getting stronger. I get people all across the United States asking about you. I said, the best way to help her is send cash and send calls. Cash mm -hmm. and call. You can yes. do one, a boat, and, and an email. But but don't give up. Thank we you. love you on the Black Business Roundtable. Dr. Ashley? Yes, please, listeners, support Janani by visiting her website, www.jananiforoakland.com, and visit her Instagram page, at Janani number four, Oakland. We'll see you soon, Janani. Take care. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, you too. Dr. Ashley, can you take us to a sponsor break? And we're going to welcome our powerhouse brother. Absolutely. And I just want to acknowledge that one of our viewers, Bleacher Day, thank you so much for your comment and for your support. I thank you on behalf of Janani for, for your donation. And thank you, Mr. Donnie Glover of BlackUSA.News. And be sure to tune in to Sister Biz with Nicole and Tamara on Wednesdays. And also Black USA Crypto News with Kamal Hubbard on Fridays. RSVP and join Chef Carter Lewis in February 2022, I believe he said on Tuesdays, for amazing biscuit sandwiches and $5 ice cold beer at... Doug, you want to do it? So slice. Uh, <laughs> Doc, Dr. Ashley was it was it was every Friday. Oh, every Friday, perfect. And, uh, girl, I got to stay. You got it right here. I, I every know Friday what on Friday nights. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and on February thirteenth, please join them as well for the Gospel Brunch, located at fifty eight forty nine san pablo avenue oakland california nine four six zero eight they can be reached uh via telephone 510-879-7689 also visit their website www.soulslice.com support a local eatery in oakland and also check out their catering services for your personal or business event make your reservations today to learn more about our, our other sponsor, Tammy Willis, owner of Magnolia Engineering and Construction, visit the website www.magnoliaengineeringandconstruction.com. Who wants to be a part of growing with our community of Oakland, California? Connect with Magnolia Engineering and Construction now on all social media platforms. And finally, to join our advertisement family, please send us an email at bbrt2021 at hotmail.com. Doug, back to you. Dr. Ashley, it is such a pleasure sharing the stage and this platform with you. Audience, let me be clear. If American, specifically Black American, we if no other time ever in history, we need that mental strength, fortitude, because between the pandemic, health issues and our communities, some of these young people saying that they'd rather die than take the shot, economic challenges, economic development challenges, redistricting, I'm surprised people are running around here jumping on buildings. Oh, gee, I think that was white people. Uh, black people would get jump off of uh, uh, roofs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But all kidding aside, talk to a mental therapy doctor, a mental health specialist. And just like you would have a broken leg or a broken uh, a foot or a bad toothache, you would go see a doctor to get it fixed. And you would go see a dentist to fit, take care of that cavity. Go see a doctor of psychology. Thank you, Dr. Ashley. 
Moving forward, let's welcome back Ray Bobbitt, founder of the African American Sport and Entertainment Group, AASEG. Dr. Ashley, can you please drum roll, brrr, <laughs> usher in with a, uh, uh, a bio reading of Ray Bobbitt? Thank you. Absolutely. It's my pre pleasure, Mr. Ray Bobbitt serves as the president and sole shareholder of Nasirfa Corporation, a facility management and urban consulting company founded 22 years ago in Oakland, California. He has founded, co-founded, or served on boards or advisory boards, such as Webster Elementary Tutoring and Mentoring Program um, in East Oakland, SFPD Southern Station Community Police Advisory Board, CalPAC Northern California, Oakland, the Parks and Recreation Commission, the Oakland Coliseum Economic Impact and Legal Action Committee, formed to keep professional sports in Oakland. Welcome, Mr. Bob. It's so happy to have you back, Ray. Thank you so much, and I'm so grateful to be here. Can you guys hear me okay this time? Mm -hmm, we can. Okay, because I Thank the you. last time... Oh, the no last way. time I had a, I had a little issue with my communication, so I wanted to make sure I was on point. Well, let me tell you, audience, not only is he a friend of the show, but he's a friend of mine. And we are going to do whatever it takes to let our citizens of Oakland County, of Alameda, state of California, and all across the United States, Oakland, California is going to be the beacon that helps you pull that light for the first African-American Black-owned NFL and NBA team. So as Val Deming say, we never tire. <laughs> That's for a beautiful thing. Yes. For our listeners that may have missed our first show with you from September 16, 2021, we will revisit three questions to give our audience and a little background. The first is, please share what the African American Sports and Entertainment Group is. Thank you. So again, uh, thank you for having me. I truly appreciate it. Uh, the African American Sports and Entertainment Group is a uh, collective of community-based organizations uh, and our leaders, uh, and but really a, a um, a group of, of business people who came together uh, to keep professional sports in Oakland initially. And uh, what what really we've transformed into is a vehicle uh, to revitalize East Oakland in particular uh, through utilizing sports and entertainment to uh, redevelop the Coliseum complex. And uh, we want to use the Coliseum complex in East Oakland to create jobs. We have the 30K for OAK initiative. We want to cur create 30,000 jobs through the Coliseum wow. development. So we are very excited about that prospect. We're looking forward to it. And um, we think this is a once in a generational opportunity to do two things. A, be the first, um, uh, to have the first African-American majority owned NFL football team uh, come to Oakland. Uh, we also want to have a um, African-American women led WNBA team come to the arena. And, um, but equally as important, we want to do something that, uh, you know, oftentimes we talk about, which is self-help, creating economic opportunity for our own community, allowing for our dollar to come through our community eight times like it did, um, you know, in Tulsa. And mm -hmm. so Black Business District, uh, we have so many plans for the Coliseum site. It's a blessing. So that's the African-American Sports Entertainment Group. And Ray, can you share with our listeners, what is the Surplus Land Act and how is that related to your efforts of AASEG? So the Surplus Lands Act um, is a uh, the, the, the responsibility of a municipality who is selling uh, public land uh, to first send it out um, to, uh, uh, you know, affordable housing entities. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know, that, that, uh, that's a very critical process uh, for any large piece of public land. So that happened um, for the city of Oakland. Um, and that's how we kind of got involved. We watched the Surplus Lands Act occur. 
um, in the in the in the uh, Coliseum site, and when uh, only one group came forward, the um, EBHO came forward to uh, do do a deal with the city, but it ended up not materializing. And so after that, we went into a purchase and sale agreement, and that's when we got involved. But that's a surplus lands act. Uh. If you, oh, Dr. Ash, I think, it, I think it's your turn. I'm, I'm so happy to see my brother. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask all, I want to yeah. him up. <laughs> no, and, and so excited to have this update as well. And then also just to, um, again, socialize our listeners. Can you share with us the Community Benefits Agreement? What is that and how can that positively impact our community? So, the community benefits agreement process is a, is a process that you go through when you're a developer and you sit at the table with community-based organizations that really represent the interests of the community and you focus on things that are important to the community, right? So um, we're a little, we're different in the way that um, we did not submit a proposal to the city of Oakland until after we had met with 50 community organizations. And so, um, but community benefits agreements are extensive, comprehensive documents that really assure that the community will have a unique benefit in any major development in the city. Um, and so what we did is we are a community first development entity. So we went and met with community groups. We did, um, you know, multiple town town halls. Uh, we did town hall forums with, you know, we had 375 people that could come on and it sold out. Um, and so we, you know, we have, we broke up into three, uh, groups, uh, you know, public services and community benefits, um, uh, you know, development and housing, and then sports and entertainment and culture and arts. So we had incredible participation, all the information that we took from the community and the community meetings, uh, we ended up incorporating into our proposal. So that's the community, the start of the community benefits agreement process. But we'll go through that process more extensively as we go through the ENA process and as we do the diligence. But we'll come to multiple agreements and we'll sit down at the table with a lot of the community groups. But uh, one of the things that we are talking about also is a community equity piece, which is something that's really important to us. That's a, something that's separate from a community benefit agreement. Uh, we want the opportunity for people in the community that live in the community to really benefit directly. Well, let me be clear here, Ray. My mom, we called you a couple days ago. Yes, you did. And my mother said, I like that boy. You better make sure you do everything. And look at my face. You be sure to do everything you can, Douglas, to make sure we get Ray and his organization Robert Bob, because she worked with Robert Bob with the redevelopment before Jerry Brown and Mayor Libby came in and destroyed the redevelopment fund. But Robert Bob was doing outstanding things back in the 90s to uh, empower black businesses here in Oakland. When he left, that left. Yeah, yeah. as you know, the Robert, Robert Bob was a, uh, uh, was that in, in, uh, in, um, an adversary of Jerry Brown. Uh, Robert Bob, at that time, there was a strong city manager form of government. And uh, Jerry Brown came in as the mayor. And him and Robert Bob had two different opinions, um, especially with relates to downtown. Robert Bob wanted to bring the A's downtown at that time to the Sears right. building and help revitalize uh, West Oakland. Uh, many people believe that if we would have listened to him, we would have still had all three sports teams. Exactly. Um, but Jerry Brown wanted to do 10K. He wanted to do the 10,000 houses or 10,000 residents in downtown Oakland. And so um, they they thought about that and they went back and forth about that. And so- Let me, that, let that, me ask you a question. What nationality was Robert Bob and what nationality was Jerry Brown? Thank you. Robert Bob is African-American, born and raised in, in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, you know, and experienced segregation and uh, is one of the most iconic um, municipal experts in the country. 
and uh, one of the most iconic city managers, the most successful city managers in the country. And that's Robert Bob. Uh, Jerry Brown is, you know, obviously, you know, not African American, and um, you know, he is uh, was probably somebody who uh, started, helped with the gentrification process of Oakland, uh, from my perspective. Um, with the, you know, I mean, because as I've said many times, I don't. In the last 40 years, I can't remember a city council being, um, you know, being uh, Republican um, or having a Republican mayor in the last 40 years that I know of. So all the displacement of African-Americans and gentrification in Oakland have happened under the watch of people who profess to be Democrats, liberals and progressives. So that means that there's an institutional problem in Oakland that creates a disparity, which is reflected in the disparity study. And so... The 10K program was an example of where, you know, there started to be uh, market rate homes in downtown and to populate as a centerpiece. And so, you know, it's uh, it's one of the reasons why we fought so aggressively for the Coliseum, because we didn't want the Coliseum to become a staging ground to gentrify East Oakland. Is it my turn, Dr. Ashley? Mm -hmm. this, brother, this brother show lays it out. Um, what are... The present obstacle you are facing today in regards to this project that you are uh, working to overcome. Thank you. Well, um, we got a unanimous vote by the city council, which is unusual. Um, but we believe we got that unanimous vote because we came with the people. We came with the community. The community was not playing. And so they came and they um, really helped us. And um, and they really told us what to do. And they and they guided us. And then they said, when we come, we all come in with you. And so um, it was overwhelming. The number of people who called and supported us, wrote letters. I mean, every organization you can think of, you know, um, from, you know, the NAACP to higher ground youth, uh, you know, uh, a training um, uh, organizations. I mean, it was incredible. You know, Allen Temple Baptist Church, some of the most established, iconic institutions in Oakland to, you know, new, young, you know, uh, entities, you know, the East Oakland Collective, Eoni, you know, just people coming out of the woodworks to help us. And so it was just amazing so when you look at obstacles the obstacle was initially that we kept getting delayed and um you know it was a delay game and it was a situation in which we really couldn't understand why we had caught we had assembled such a qualified group of african americans that nobody could really you know like when they vetted our capital they realized that capital wasn't going to be a problem for us uh everything that you could have, I mean, we have Robert Bob, he can negotiate with any municipal entity. You know, you got Alan Domes, his father is the first developer in Oakland, African-American and Shonda Scott. And, you know, you got, you know, um, Bill Duffy, the most successful power, you know, super agent um, in, in, the, in the world. Uh, I mean, it was really hard to look at our group and you know, you got Lanice Jones and John Jones and just from the community side and the political side, it was like talking about like an all-star team of Oakland people. So it was really kind of so. So our obstacles have really been with respect to uh, timing, you know, and we just hope that we don't get delayed and delayed and delayed because sometimes you can kill a project by delaying it. You know what? I'm like a kid in school. I got another question. Can you put your mic? Put you because we got a lot of background off your mic. Yours on mute right now. Mine. Okay. Yeah, yours on mute right now because I got a. Okay, audience. This is not from Ray Bobbitt. This is not from the African American. No, no, no. Tell him to come back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, make sure he comes back in. But I had to say this. I think he went off. He'll be back on. But I have to say this. We had the mayor of Oakland, and that was my next question, two questions to him. We had the mayor of Oakland go to Washington, D.C., and um, 
meet with Kamala Harris, the vice mayor for the city of Oakland. And let me be clear, audience. The mayor, they showed a picture of the mayor sitting with the vice mayor asking for $400 million for the uh, Fisher family and the Disneyland park that they want to build for the Fisher family. And I have not heard the mayor of Oakland say one word about the African-American sports and entertainment group. And Mayor Libby Schaaf or anyone who's listening, I'm humbly asking you, with the economic status of this city, as it relates to blacks only getting point, oh, they, oh man, I'm glad. <laughs> I gotta say it again because, Ray, I want you to know, just like I told Janani, uh, Pamela Price, who's running for district attorney, uh, and a, a whole host of other political people who we're going to start acknowledging, and not just in the city of Oakland and the county and the state, but across this country. I said this when you were gone, so I'm going to say it while you're here. And you don't have to respond to it, but because I'm going to wait and catch the mayor and ask her myself. She went to Washington, D.C., to meet with Kamala Harris, who is from Oakland, California, and asked for $400 million, hundreds of millions of dollars for the Fisher Family Disneyland Park. And I have not even heard her mention the African American Sports and Entertainment Group. I haven't even heard her mention it to do anything. You don't have to comment because you know, this is, I don't want, Mayor Libby Schaaf, let your legacy be that you help usher in the first African-American sports-owned entertainment group in America. Not that you went and got a billionaire, a couple more hundred million. And that's, I'm trying to be nice about it. But if you look at it, I've met Robert Bob. My mother said, make sure you help Robert Bob and Ray Bobbin. Shonda Scott. I met Shonda Scott, a powerhouse sister. Lanice Jones. Um, a, a friend of mine just had an auction and she ordered, she uh, won one auction. We dropped it at, off at her house. Uh, and audience, hey, Ray, are you sitting down, Ray Bobbin? I got some exciting news for you. I'm sitting Okay, I'm, I'm just taking it off the teleprompter. Mm -hmm. Hot off the wire here, folks. <laughs> John Jones and Sabir Lockett will be our guest speakers next week. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the guy. <laughs> John Jones is the man. Well, uh, um, before Sabir. we go to our next question, tell us a little bit about John Jones. I think you may know him. <laughs> John Jones is one of the partners at the AASEG. Uh, reentry at its highest level, reform at its highest level, uh, lives it, breathes it, walks it. Uh, he's the real deal. He's an example. He's a just a phenomenal person. Mm -hmm. And um, I've known him, and it just everything he says is for real. And um, he has a lot of respect and love in the community. It's, it's just phenomenal. And uh, you listen to him speak and you just get inspired. A true Oakland activist. And um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just, man, he he been working and supporting me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, just said, Ray, anything, anything. And so, you know, people don't know this, but he's an equity partner in our whole project, you know, because this is about empowerment. This is about empowering our community and our community has to be a part of this process or why are we doing it? You know, this is an opportunity for us to um, build the largest development in the history of Oakland. You talk about Howard Terminal, the Coliseum is four times bigger. Talking about 155 acres when you look at all the, uh, you know, ancillary, uh, you know, parcels. We're talking about a life-changing 
generational opportunity for East Oakland and West Oakland for for African American and, and Latinos really to be able to have supplemental income and permanent jobs. And I mean, if you were to ask any of these brothers is out here struggling and doing something, if you offered them a, a, a high wage earning job and where they could, every one of them, not even one of them is going to still want to be out there doing that. And I would like to say me being a 59 year resident of Oakland, I see brothers and sisters who I graduated with from Casamont High School all the time, hoping that this project goes through and telling me that whatever you need, and they say, man, I don't usually vote, but I'm gonna vote for the brother on this project, man. We need an <laughs> NFL. <laughs> you, know, you can imagine that conversation. Oh yeah, yeah. You got a war. You got a warrior of uh, a war chest of warriors out here who are ready to hit the ground running, and. Um, Dr. Ashley, kind of forgive me. I'm kind of getting greedy on the question. <clears throat> Can you let us know what politicians are backing you or helping you? We ain't saying the ones that are not, because I already I'm all I'm all over that. But the ones that are, and one or two have been on this show already. Well, I can tell you that uh, Rebecca Kaplan is our has our champion, mm-hmm. and um, Carol Fife is a champion for us. Uh, she's, you know, got down with us and, um, you know, um, Nikki and Shang both, uh, supported us. Um, Treva has supported us, um, uh, you know, and obviously Noel Gallo co-sponsored our, uh, you know, co-sponsored our resolution. Um, and, you know, we've had a good relationship with Lauren, you know, it, it you know, it's, and so we, we had a unanimous vote. And that came because of all, like you said, we got warriors on the ground. And I think, you know, like, you know, um, it, everybody supported us, you know, and I, I have to say that, um, uh, that we, the, the city council came and, 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 and stood up for us because I think the people spoke, you know, and you were, you were, um, you know, you, man, you know, well, let, let me say this. The Coliseum now has moved out of District 7. Well, they're still, I think they're still finalizing it, but we're, we're fighting it tooth and nail because East Oakland, deep East Oakland, need those dollars and that economic boom, um, more so than District 6. But then I heard you say run off all the uh, council members, uh, Kaplan, Vice Mayor Kaplan, and Councilwoman at Large, uh, my friend Carol Fife's, um uh, uh my friend Shang Tao, uh council member Shang Tao, uh Nikki uh council member Nikki Bass, um uh Dan, council member Dan Cobb. And now that the Coliseum is in Lauren Taylor district, is that gonna affect anything or are we gonna still be able to move ahead? Because I wanna make sure that whatever obstacles that are there, and if there if there's as they say, if there's no there there. There's no, <clears throat> but we want to make sure that all city council in Oakland, California supports you. And if they don't, we're going to take our black votes to somebody else who's going to uh, uh, support black economic and black development and black empowerment. And to uh, go, um, go ahead, well, sir. I, I did hear that uh, the Coliseum was last night that the Coliseum was going to probably be in District 6. And, um, you know, obviously when you live in, when you're, when you're African-American, you got a lot of family in district six and seven. So right. that's, and even district five really too. Right. Um, so, um, but six and seven, you know, really are, they combine in a lot of ways, you know, um, the, a lot of areas that, um, you know, are, they, they kind of share borders in a lot of situations and, you know, they're, they're both have the highest level of African-Americans in both of those two districts. Um, I did see Lauren recently at a um, higher ground event in Sobrani Park uh, for MLK um, and in Brookfield um, as well. And uh, he and I had worked uh, uh, with the, we had done a, um, a contest and I'm working with uh, Castlemont. Uh, they're doing uh, the, the architectural program there is doing a, um, a, uh, a project in which 
the students are giving their vision of the Coliseum from the standpoint of them, from students that live in the community, they're giving their vision. And I'm going to be working directly with them on field trips and things like that. When we, uh, we really want to incorporate uh, all of the, the kids. Uh, we want them to come see black people, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we want to, cause we're going to build a city within a city to some degree, you know, and um, like my, uh, my cousin went to Africa recently. And one of the things we talked about is that uh, he said that uh, everybody was black, like every pilot, every, every air, air, airplane he got on, all the municipal people, every hotel, every construction person, everything that was built, every, everything. You know, and so we think it'll be fascinating and really a great opportunity for, you know, African-American kids to come and watch something be developed by African-American people right in front of them. So we want to create a circumstance in which field trips, they can come and watch this whole process occur because it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be a long process. And so there's going to be an opportunity for us to do training. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we have, we're working with like uh, the Turners, you know, the, those guys with CRC. Um, working with them. Um, I mean, those guys are just incredible. Um, we're, we're putting together something now to where we're going to start training young brothers in, in construction, uh, working with them, with um, Cypress Mandela, with um, the PIC, um, you know, uh, the Private Industries Council uh, with Dr. Cobb and Gay Cobb. And, you know, we, we talk about like getting down to the nitty gritty and creating these 30,000 jobs and having all of these entities involved. But yeah, I saw Lauren at the, um, at the Castlemont event and that's where we connected. And one of the things he said during the vote is that one of the things that made him vote for us is that he saw us in the community and we kept running into each other because we're in the community. And so I'm hopeful that, you know, uh, that he will continue to support us. And, you know, um, I believe that if he, as if he's running for mayor, I don't think he can still run for that seat. So it's still gonna, so it's likely gonna be a different person in district six. Well, let me be clear, audience, in Oakland, California, the county of Alameda, state of California, and in the United States, Mr. Ray Bobbitt and his team, African American Sports and Entertainment Group, I humbly ask that you all write, email, USPS postcard, <laughs> and send a letter on a dove for peace to our <laughs> Oakland political politicians, including Mayor Libby Schaaf, and let her know that this is a time that Oakland could stand out as the beacon that we have always been for diversity and inclusion for all people. Amen. And Ray Bobbitt, every week on this show, moving forward, I will be saying A-A-S-E-G. In addition to, I can't wait till John Jones the <laughs> third. Hey, he mama that that uh MMA John Jones, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the brother is coming on next week, and we are excited because I know he was part of your team. But just a little pencil prick of information on him. This brother has educated himself and articulates and educate other brothers coming out of the correctional institution of, you don't have to go backward when you're looking forward. Amen. Amen. He has authored some of the uh, rental uh, agreements where before they say, well, if you went to prison, you can't get, uh, um, uh, you can't rent of our, any of our units. It's illegal to do that now. He's the author of some job training program. I'm thoroughly impressed. And considering how America has locked up a lot of black Americans, he and Sabir, and I don't know if you ever heard of Sabir Lockett. Yep, of course, yeah. And you know about <laughs> them two brothers, man. He's out, of, he's out of LA, but he has done a wonderful job. I've worked with him on Pamela Price's district attorney campaign, and he's doing some great things out here as director of a faith-based organization so and I, I always want to make sure i embrace pamela price it's my sister hey she, matter of fact i i talked to her this week and asked her can she come on the show a couple of times before um uh before she her election is i think it's 
April or, or May. The election is May. I thought it was in June. Yeah, it's something like that. It's close. Well, May, June, but in the next couple, two, three months, yeah. Pamela Price running for district attorney, civil rights lawyer who argued a case in the Supreme Court and won for a wrongful uh, uh, harassment case with a railroad worker, Pamela Price, the district attorney. Dr. Ashley, uh, we better go for a commercial because I'm getting excited here. No, but, and before we do, we have a couple minutes. I just want to go back to something you said, Ray. There's so many attractive elements of the AASG plan, including, um, you know, developing Oakland into a Black Wall Street, too. But in the vein of education and me being professor, I have to ask you about the sports and entertainment campus academic center yes. and your vision for training our youth and just for our parents listening how can they help to prepare their children uh, to be competitive for these opportunities or get exposure can you share a little bit about your plans sure so we are um in the process of collaborating with job corp ah, to nice. get a um <sighs> Uh, to get a uh, satellite from their Treasure Island uh, Job Corps uh, um, site. And we would, and there's uh, Lincoln University, who's a 112 year university in Oakland that people don't know actually yep. is in Oakland. Gary Payton is the head coach of their basketball team. Yep. Um, they want to potentially bring all of their student housing to the Coliseum mm. and do a yep. collaboration with the HBCU. Uh, uh, so, and we're talking about, and in our 30K for OAK project, we are very much going to have in one of the development pads a complete <clears throat> educational pad <clears throat> where there'll be educational institutions mm -hmm. that will go from job, uh, from revocation training uh, to uh, job development. And we will focus on youth. And we will, like I said, with Castlemont, uh, we're we are already reaching out every element every step we take is going to incorporate education into the process mm -hmm. um, and so we uh, we think there's a great opportunity to have um, a collaboration mm -hmm. of education at this site and so we're going to really heavily focus on job creation mm -hmm. and and preparation uh, like the old ROP programs mm -hmm. and things like that where high school students can work in substitution for credits mm -hmm. and things like that so Everything we're doing is going to incorporate job training into education so that we can prepare ourselves for the, our, our young people to be uh, in this workforce. And we will work with reentry. We will work with every entity you can think of, uh, because this is going to be something that our community is going to really benefit from. I mean, this is and, and you know, the other thing that I wanted to say um, with respect to that is in our community equity proposal that we sent to the city. Um, one of the areas that we still have to refine legally, but we want to create a foundation that is generated and supported through a service fee that would be generated through the lifetime of the development. So mm -hmm. for the next hundred years, so we could do something as simple as saying a community service fee, like a CSF, it could be 10 cents, but for every time you go to a game and buy a, hot dog or a drink or you go to the hotel that'll be there the new hotel or you buy a book or you go to any any transaction that's made within the site will have a, a community fee will go directly into a community foundation that foundation will be operated by community-based organizations that focus on uh east oakland and mm -hmm. we will and so the things that you could qualify for would be like if you lived in the community and you had you were a renter and you had good credit and a, and, and a good income, but you just didn't have a down payment. You could qualify for a grant to get your down payment made. If you, if you had all the ability to go to, to, to go to higher education, you could apply and get a scholarship. You know, um, these are things that we could do with a foundation that would generate that much revenue that would give, equity directly back into the people from the community and make an, a lasting impact sending kids to college um you know being able to make people you know create home ownership and the, you know the the transfer of of, uh, of 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 wealth through our community um to be able to have everybody participate and so and even the most underserved and the most impacted 
that's what we want to focus on as well. We want to make sure our reentry game is is extreme, and you'll see with John Jones. Um, we want to make sure that anybody who is um, close to being homeless or you know our, our unhoused uh, community is impacted. So we're ready to to take this to a whole nother level and um, do it ourselves. Mm. You know, and um, it, you know there'll be you know market rate housing, but there'll be a quality affordable housing. Um, and in our market rate housing, one of the mechanisms we would like to explore legally is if you've left Oakland in the last 20 years, you have a priority to come back mm. and, buy the, and buy the home because we want people who've been displaced from this community to come back here. Because one of the things we were concerned about in some of the other proposals was they wanted to create a bunch of market rate housing at the Coliseum and essentially have, you know, people walking dogs and you know, and, and jogging and, and going to work in San Francisco and coming back and create basically a Piedmont mm -hmm. in the middle of District 7 in East Oakland, and which would have translated to 3,000 votes, which is about, you know, not much less than you, you win, you know, in District 7 if you get that many votes. So uh, we're very conscious of, of making sure that this Coliseum can be used as a staging ground to try and gentrify East Oakland. We're not, that's not happening. So we're we, that's one of the reasons why we fought so hard for the site and mm -hmm. and it all became and it all came and developed from this idea of having the first black owned NFL football team but it created something that's everybody's on board now everybody's mm -hmm. like saying we got to do this this is because we're all just kind of tired of being sick and tired we're done right when you think about it black people are working more together than they ever have like you a lot of people want to lead you to believe that we're in conflict with each other and we you know we we don't get along with each other but it's so special to work with all these black people together i mean it is incredible and just every way everywhere we go every direction we go in it's happening and it's happening right here in oakland and we're going to be the as we usually are we create movements in oakland and so we're, this is this this uh this black business district and this development and this revitalization, including our, our Latino brothers and sisters and, and in, you know, all marginalized communities, but, but, you know, unapologetically are most impacted our African-Americans. So we um, are most certainly prioritizing uh, that situation and making sure that the things that were impact us get addressed. So we're, we're just grateful for this opportunity. On that note, Let's go for a quick sponsor break and get right back into Ray Bobby, African American Sports and Entertainment Group, a group here on Black Business Roundtable, who we will support you before, during, and post construction of that first Black NFL owned team and women's <laughs> NL NBA team. Dr. Ashley, please. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Donnie Glover, BlackUSA.News. And be sure to visit his YouTube page, YouTube backslash Donnie Glover for informative and insightful Black community news. Like us on Facebook today. Support Oakland small Black businesses such as Soul Slice, uh, Chef Carter Lewis's restaurant. And don't forget to RSVP for their February Friday evening biscuit sandwiches, and $5 ice cold beer a night, as well as Gospel Brunch on February 13th, located at 5849 San Pablo Avenue, Oakland, California, 94608. They can be reached by phone 510-879-7689 or by visiting their websites, www.soulslice.com. Again, support a local eatery in Oakland and check out their full service catering menu. Magnolia Engineering and Construction, whose mission is to become the premier building and engineering resource for large scale commercial and transportation building projects in the Bay Area and beyond. The vision is to further the presence of black women in the construction and engineering industry through key partnerships and building contracts and the municipal government and transportation sectors. And finally, to join our advertisement family, please send us an email and close with details about your business to bbrt2021 
at hotmail.com. Now back to our wonderful discussion with Ray Bobbitt. Uh, Ray, I have the privilege of asking you the next question, but I actually wanna go back to one of our viewers who um, wants to know, how are you engaging and employing black professionals in your projects, such as engineers, architects, lawyers, accountants, et cetera? That's a great question. And uh, it's, a, it's a, something that we touched on today in one of our meetings, and we mm -hmm. have tangible evidence of the fact that everything we do, uh, we wanna make sure that uh, we give the best opportunity to African-American professionals. Uh, our, our general counsel um, is Jade uh, William Smith. She grew up in the Acorn. She uh, is one of the most prolific basketball, women's basketball players uh, that's ever played in Oakland. She's a legendary at Rainbow Recreation Center and at Brookfield. Uh, ask anybody about her, she's incredible, but she's an attorney. She went and played overseas. She came back as an attorney, heard what we were doing, reached out to me and said, Ray, I want to be a part of it. Um, went back and got her whole law firm, Bailey Glasser, to come and do this pro bono. Before we signed the engagement agreement, we required that Jay would be the point person and would have uh, partnership uh, uh, compensation working with us. And that we would only uh, allow, uh, we would only go into an engagement agreement on general counsel if she was a part of it. And so Secondly, uh, when it came time for us to get insurance, um, you know, we we reached out and we wanted to make sure that there was an African-American insurance agent because we have to get insurance for the site and through the ENA process. Um, so blessed that Lanice Jones connected us with Ivory. Um, she phenomenal uh, uh, principal um, in a insurance company and is a African-American woman owner insurance uh, broker phenomenal and she is uh i mean just crushing it right now all of our um, our architectural initial architectural work um got done um by deshaun dixon young brother uh went to uh left he grew up on 92nd and holly um grew up and went to um uh wisconsin madison university came back in architectural uh architectural um degree did the first renderings of the entire site. Mm -hmm. um, every turn that we can have African-Americans in position, uh, that's what we're doing. It, our entire assembly of the six organizations that we're working with is all made up of African-Americans who own companies that have multiple employees. So just our existence mm -hmm. with respect to Shonda Scott and 360 Total Concept and you know, when we do PR, we use Sandra Varner and, you know, like we don't, there's nothing that we don't do that doesn't touch the black dollar. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that's a great question. And it's really important to know that if you have an interest in working together with us, we actually are looking to work. I mean, Alan Dones is a, you know, his father was the first African-American developer in Oakland. And now he is one of the most successful African-American developers in Oakland. And, you know, like I said, Bill Duffy is an agent. Um, and a chief strategist and Robert Bob and the Robert Bob group, it, it goes on and on. And not only are we using African-American professionals, but you have people who are part of our team like Sam Wise. I mean, talk about a phenomenal sister. I mean, just incredible. Um, so many people to talk about, too, too many to re like really, you know, Jonathan Jones who works with the Post, um, good brother that's part of us, you know, journalist. Uh, you know, uh, just, I mean, it, it's so beautiful what we're doing. So most certainly every opportunity we have to utilize um, African-Americans on this project, we'll, it's happening. <clears throat> Already well, happening. Well, let me say this, Mr. Ray Bobbitt. You guys are striking the fear in a lot of people of European descent, and that's why I don't think that um, they want to help as much now. But because you have laid out a strategic plan, and um, it's, this is coming from me, audience, white people, 
if a brother or sister is out there working nine to five, paying taxes, putting the dollar back into the economy that they live in, uh, uh, buying home, they're less likely to rob you. So keep that in mind when you see this brother talking about 30,000. That's 30,000 people less likely to rob you. So if you don't want to look at it in diversity and inclusion, look at it in safety. <laughs> well, I think also, too, and that's a great point, Doug. And, you know, the, the, the thing that's really important is that one of the reasons why we're so focused on African-Americans is because we're the most impacted. You think about, I mean, it, 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 there's no there's no reason for us. To, we don't need to justify that. All you have to do is look at 70% of the people in Oakland are homeless or black. You know, 68% of the people who get murdered in Oakland are black. You know, 58% um, of the people who live in poverty are black. You know, so we're talking about like things that just aren't even a question. You know, like who, who wouldn't want to help the most impacted and underserved? So there's no apology necessary. There's no explanation necessary. It's like, and the thing that's really important is that it's the, it, 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 what's really exciting and what's really scary, I think, to people is that you've got brothers and sisters that have been displaced from Oakland mm -hmm. that are now middle class. Mm -hmm. They're coming back to Oakland, mm -hmm. coming back and rescuing the people in the community who didn't have the same circumstances who didn't have the same opportunities, who didn't have the same set of circumstances. That's the part that there was a disconnect for a minute, you know, where now you have so many more black people coming back to their communities, going beyond getting, going to church, seeing grandma or getting a haircut. Like and now everybody's like, I want to come back. I want to help. I want to be a part of, you know, because a lot of times, then this whole displacement, how many people moved to Antioch and to Tracy and to Stockton and to, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, and so that's the point too, is that I don't, we, you, you know, it, it's really important to know that the fastest growing middle class in America is black people. And, and, and African-American people are doing as a whole, man, we're starting to really, can, can, we're starting to go hard. Can I get you to say that again? Because I so often say that black people are on the bottom of everything, not in the city of Oakland, the county, the state, the country, but the world, Craig, the world. <laughs> so say that again, that blacks are what now? So our audience- Black, black people, people African-Americans is the fastest growing middle class in America, period. We're a trillion dollar group. It's, it's no question about that. And when you think of Oakland and you think of San Francisco or Bayview Hunters Point, the percentages of people who are even impacted within our community in these communities are smaller. Right. San Francisco has what, 3% African-American now? You know, you know, I mean, it's so, so at the, the point I'm making is that there's so many African-Americans that are that are really making it and doing better and working together. But people don't like to really talk about that. They want to characterize us as people who are, you know, you know, like impacted from a negative. Well, that's one segment of our. Community. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think you're going to say crackheads. <laughs> no, 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 that's just that, that's one segment of our. Community. I understand. I'll be a funny man. Yeah, no, no, no. But you know what I'm saying? Like they want to say it's criminals or whatever, you know, or we're impacted or we're you know, like, yeah, that's true. But look at us as a, as a people, Right. we're starting to like, and she, people should be worried right. because if we, you know, as we start to do things like what we're doing now and what we're doing with this project and saying, no, we're not, we don't need you to tell us what to do. Right. You know, we, need, so we, 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 like, we got, we got this. All, all we need is for you to get, you know, for us to have the right opportunities and to have fair and equitable opportunity and we and you'll see how how solid we are you'll see i am so glad you pointed that out 
we can build our own businesses. Absolutely. We can patronize our own businesses. And we should do that. This show foundation stands on the concept that you just stated. And as we come close to closing out, and once again now, I'm going to send this clip to Ray, uh, to uh, Sabir and John and say, hey, man, Ray lit it up. Cause <laughs> the reason why I'm bringing those brothers onto the show, Ray, is to show our audience. Even if, and I'll say it, even if the man put incarcerates you, you can still come out and do great things. Yes, you can. Because, yeah, because I, I used to work with some of the big companies in America and the world. And if a brother had a parking ticket, he couldn't even get a job at a UPS or a Cisco Foods or something right. like that. But I was in management and I did a lot of the training. And I would look in the files of some of those white guys and white people. Man, he had murder, drug kingpin. Uh, 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 domestic violence, uh, kidnapping, and we would hire them. But if a black man would come in, if he had a parking ticket, they say, "Oh no, we can't, we can't, we, we can't hire those people." So, Doug, let me just jump in for a second because I want to make an announcement because this brother Bleacher Dave has really uh, complimented Ray. We want to invite all of our listeners who uh, want to offer. Um, and contact Ray for potential collaboration to email us at bbrt2021 at hotmail.com. And we're going to be forwarding these emails to you. Ray, while you've been speaking, I've been looking at our viewers and we have some people with some skills that are really excited about what you're doing. You see this comment across the screen of people saluting you, but I just wanted to interject and also to plug the website again, AASEG oakland.com and there's also a telephone number at the bottom of the home page of ways website but again of course ray you know you lit it up we're curious how can our viewers um support your efforts to transform the coliseum in the neighborhood surrounding i think it's like uh really important to get involved like mm -hmm. you you mentioned bleacher dave people don't know this but he's like one of the architects of the community benefits agreement for the whole Howard Terminal for West Oakland. Wow. And uh, that's, yeah, that's the type of brother who, um, you know, he he does, he puts in work. He doesn't, you know, say a lot of, you know, but, you know, if people who know, know the kind of work he puts in, like it's, it's just phenomenal. And so um, that process is going to be something that is going to be challenging. So we just need people to get involved and to contact us because we really, truly, want to um, do everything we can to uh, make this just a once in a generation uh, opportunity for all of us, you know, for, for all of our community and really take the most underserved from our community and give them the best opportunity. But um, I'm just grateful and um, anything that we can do to uh, further incorporate our community into this process, uh, we're, we're happy to do it and we're grateful to do it. Well, as always, you are a welcome guest and friend of this show. Audience, I humbly ask you, if you are Californian or New Yorker, please call the mayor's office for the city of Oakland or city council for the city of Oakland and let them know that we have Mr. Ray Bobbitt and the African-American sports and entertainment back. And Oakland should be the first city in this country to own, for a black uh, uh, group of people to own, majority own, a NFL team and a woman's NBA team. And if you call and you write, hell, if you don't have a computer, put a, get a dove and put a table... Put a piece of paper to his leg and aim it at the uh, uh, city hall and see at the mayor's office. But mm -hmm. get the word out. Yeah. Ray Bobbitt, we got your back, man. And Thank next you. time you have some time, let us know. We would love to have you back on the show and keep us updated because I'm going to find out if there's anybody opposing you. And as they say, 
as I told my pit bulls in the back, get them. <laughs> hey, you hey, you already did in a very specific form that I was in. And uh, somebody tried to come at me and you lit them up, you know. So, you know, my dad graduated from Castle, my, my, my mother from Fremont. And um, and so, you know, you know, how to, you know how those nights are. You know, hey, so man, you, we come hard, <laughs> man. You don't mess with our folks. Thank yeah, you, Ray. So, all right. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. All right. Be sure to watch it. your brothers next week, Sabir and oh, John man. Jones. I can't wait to see that. That's highly anticipated. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank right. you again. Yeah. Ray right. Bobbitt of the African American Sports and Entertainment Group, America and across the world. Make sure that you direct your energy and your attention to making sure that his organization, the African American Sports and Entertainment Group, has all the political support needed so that they can become successful in the city of diversity. Oakland, Amen. California. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. God bless. Thank you to our weekly special guest, Dr. Ashley Coleman, doctor of psychology. I can't say my doctor, so I got to say <laughs> our doctor. Dr. Ashley, but you know you're my doctor. Now. Our doctor, Dr. Ashley Coleman, doctor of psychology. We are glad to have back Janani Ramachandran, Esquire our grassroots fighter of human rights and candidate running for Oakland City Council District 4. Even though they cut her little two blocks out, we're going we're gonna to continue to fight for that sister because there's some kind of way we're going to get her back. Uh, they're going to have to fix that. Also, see more of Janani via her website, Janani4, that's F-O-R, Oakland.com, or on Instagram at Janani for the number four, Oakland. Thank you again to Ray Bobbitt of the African American Sports and Entertainment Group, AASEG, at AASEGOakland.com. Thank you all for your appearance on the show today. And we hope that you will come back and continue to educate and grow our growing audience in the future. A special shout out to Donnie Glover of Black USA and current sponsor, So Slice. Uh, Ray, you got to get over there, man. They got beer and uh, pizza starting Friday, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to chop it up, brother. <laughs> Soul Slice Restaurant and Catering, and Chef Carter Lewis and Magnolia Engineering and Construction to join. Black Business Roundtable Advertising Family, or to be a possible guest on the uh, show, reach us at bbrt2021 at hotmail.com. Include your company name, address, website, company phone number, and social media page info in your email or in our email at uh, uh, dot com. We also have a network of shows hosted by Donnie Garver, such as Chapman Friends on Monday, Party Marty, I would do this, Party Marty on Tuesday, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sister Biz on Wednesday, and I think I think there's another show that's working with them, but I'm going to get that uh, correction on the next show mm -hmm. on uh, Wednesday. And Kamal Hubbard and Black USA Crypto News, the brother Shaw, I'm telling you, if you want to know about crypto news, and they were just having something on the news talking about a lot of money has been lost by people who had bad investments. So crypto news with Kamal Hubbard, get informed so, so that you don't get got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, also on uh, 60 Minutes, uh, Black USA with Michael Haynes uh, on Sunday and Tajmir Blackout on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. I always, uh, I don't forget her, but uh it's 7 a.m uh west coast time so uh sometime i may not make it <laughs> um but she is a wealth of information regarding what's going on on the east coast uh and check her out audience as we are right on time thank you audience for tuning in and remember together we can listen 
we can learn and we can share because I know you care. This is Doug Blackshear of the Black Business Roundtable. God bless and good night. Thank you. We'll see you next week.